When I became a K-pop fan in 2018, one of the easiest things to notice was how quick and easy it was for an idol to become a villain. The level of nitpicking in K-pop genuinely surprised me, and it's not because I hadn't seen other celebrities being nitpicked, for example, Hailey Bieber, but mainly I understood where the nitpicking came from because of their shady history. For instance, Hailey Bieber's like really racist tweets and stuff from the past, you can look them up and I'm sure some people have made videos about them, made me kind of understand why people didn't like her, not to mention the weird timeline between when she started dating Justin Bieber and when Justin was back with his ex. Don't get me started on the fact that his ex is constantly interacting with Hailey hating TikTokers. However, the point I'm trying to make is that when people didn't like her, you can almost pinpoint to where the hate started and it's usually based off of something the celebrity said about a sensitive topic. With K-pop though, I became acutely aware that most idols were discouraged from discussing really sensitive topics or anything too political. So the amount of hate that they would get for the tiniest things kind of shocked me because in the West, it honestly wouldn't be such a big deal. I'm sure you guys remember, was it in 2017 when Jenny forgot some of the lyrics to her song and this just snowballed a myriad of hate towards her, which was weird because usually in the West, when celebrities forget the lyrics to their songs, their fans will just laugh it off. It becomes something to giggle about on Twitter, or their fans would simply sing along to remind them of the lyrics. In K-pop, it's something that is considered unacceptable because of the level of perfection that is over there. So when the Jenny H train started, I was pretty much a baby K-pop stan, and I was kind of taken back about the amount of hate that Jenny was getting. While yes, I was slightly annoyed about the amount of attention that you know YG was giving her in comparison to the rest of the members I didn't understand why a lot of people were really really mad at her to the point that she could not even pick up a blanket without criticism so when this started happening to Wan Young I could see the resemblance in their hate trains of course their cases were different mainly because Jenny's hate came from all the frustration about the lack of content when it comes to Blackpink and most of the fans didn't have anything else to do other than crap on her character. But it's almost been the same, the complaints about favoritism and then the complaints about attitude and then her being called names. You can see the similarities kind of go parallel when it comes to their journey of becoming some of the most hated idols. One of the things I've noticed about K-pop stands is that they usually stop hate trains when they find someone else to pick on. For instance, throughout 2018 going on to 2020, Jenny was just easily getting so much hate and getting dragged. And the reason why most people stopped was, well, I mean, I don't know if I would say they stopped, but the hate did die down because a lot of fans found another pound of flesh. I remember in July 2020 is when we got the Mina and Chimin situation, and then September of that year, we got the Wujin situation. So people had two other people to hate on and crap on and were preoccupied with them. And while Jenny still gets hate, it's nowhere nearly as bad as it was between 2018 and 2020. Now, when Jimin and Wujin were vindicated in 2021, and a lot of people started changing their minds about the initial opinions they had on them, they needed a new villain, and that villain was Espa. People started nitpicking their stage presence, especially Winter. They started talking about her quote unquote attitude simply based on, I don't know, a resting bitch face or whatever. But as 2021 came to a close, a lot of that hate started trickling down to Wan Young. And by the time it was 2022, the Wan Young hate train was full on steam ahead. No pun intended. <laughs> and it just became worse over time and it has not stopped. What alarms me about all of this is the fact that Wan Yang is literally only 17 years old, yet people have normalized her hate so much that it doesn't surprise anyone to see Wan Yang getting a lot of hate. I've seen some people say, and this was someone who mentioned a confession, saying that they actually enjoy Wan Yang getting hate 
because it makes them feel better about themselves. So this goes on to the people who say, you're just saying that people hate Wen Yang because of jealousy is not true, but there's someone who literally went out of their way to actually tell me the truth that they enjoy Wen Yang getting hate because she's everything that they're not and it makes them feel better about themselves. People like that do exist. When I look at Wan Yang's time in Eyes One, I noticed that while she had controversies here and there, the reaction to those controversies wasn't nearly as bad as how she has it right now. I strictly remember in Eyes One when she mentioned that Eugene doesn't shower every day. Eugene did not get the chance to explain her side of the story, and so K-pop fans were not only mad at Eugene for allegedly not showering, but they really, really were pissed off at Wan Yang for bringing this up. You need to understand that with K-pop fans, if you do not give them a reason for your behavior, they will make up a reason for themselves anyway. We also what happened with Woo Jin when he left Stray Kids. We never had a reason as to why he left, so in 2020, fans made up a reason, which was the fact that he was bullying the members, which obviously was not true. And when people didn't understand why Wan Young would bring something that private up, they started to make up that the reason as to why she did it is because she found Eugene as competition. She wanted to make herself feel better or look better, so she said some mean things about Eugene because she sees her as threatening in terms of competition, whether it is beauty or popularity. And unfortunately, this reasoning became the whole foundation, you could say, to the pick me allegations. Not too long after when Eyes One had a broadcast interview where the hosts were all males, they were asking her about some of the things that she had studied in school and Wen Yang was talking about how fortunate she was to learn all these different things, whether it was general education or the arts. And she also mentioned that she studied how to speak English. One of the guests who was clearly not Korean, asked her if she spoke with her other members in English. Wan Yang mentioned that she didn't because they didn't speak English that well. Now was that factual? Yes. Was that demeaning to the other members? Depends on how you feel about Wan Yang. See, a lot of people felt like the reason why she said that was to put her other members down. But the truth still remains. The members of Eyes One did not speak English, hence why she didn't speak English with them. It was that simple, but people turned it around to she was trying to be attention seeking and wanted all these males to give her attention. Since then, people started paying extra close attention to the way she interacted with whether it was a male co-host or just about any male idol that was within a 500 meter radius of her. And since then, people started noticing that she was expected to act overly cute because of the image she had created. Wen Yang came in to produce 48 when she was only 13 years old, so people expected her to be this cute, adorable little thing. So she kind of carried that into her eyes one days when she was promoting. And because of this, she got a lot of flack and hate for being quote unquote, attention seeking. And as you can see, whenever you have a feminine outlook or an overly feminine outlook in your persona on television, in K-pop, that is automatically considered pick me behavior. I already have a video talking about pick me behavior, which by the way, a lot of the comments there were so sweet and supportive, so thank you guys. But the term pick me mainly came from black Twitter when it talks about a black woman who is willing to put other black women down and throw them under the bus to get the attention of black men. I kind of go into deeper detail as to how this came about and why the you know black community had this topic of discussion to begin with and how it honestly does not pertain to any of the k-pop idols who are seen as pygmy namely one young and yuna but in the comments people also mentioned that the only people who are actually exhibiting pygmy behavior are the k-pop fans who are calling them pygmies since then Wan Yang never really got into any deep controversies up until December of 2021. And if you know anything about December 2021, it is the month that I've officially debuted as a group. Eyes One had disbanded, which was a painful memory for all of us, I am sure. With Jenny and Wan Yang, it's parallel in the fact that the favoritism story mainly started with the outfits. Wan Yang, it was pretty obvious that her outfits 
were different from the rest of the members i'm pretty sure you guys remember the pink ensemble that she wore in comparison to the rest of the members black and blue when they were i believe they were promoting on sbs and this outfit kind of stood out you know pink the rest of the outfits are black it became obvious there were times when one young was put in complete white and the other members were wearing black and it didn't really matter whether she was hosting or not you could see a significant difference in the outfits it was if it was not the color it had to be the style and this became acutely obvious to a lot of people and it kind of pissed them off in fact i remember the hate truly escalated when her and eugene were the only members who actually went to promote on a radio show and the rest of Ive was not there. And this really, really made a lot of people upset. Since noticing that the outfits for Wan Young were different, fans started to nitpick everything else. They wanted to see how she interacted with the rest of the members, whether she liked them or not. It was obvious that she loved the members of Ives One, so no one questioned her relationship with Yu Jin, but the question as to how she treated the rest of the members became pretty obvious and it felt like fans were actually going out of their way to make it look like she didn't like the other members. I especially saw people saying that there were not a lot of interactions between her and the rest of the members, which I don't know what they're talking about considering that these girls literally spend every single day together. But in other words, people were trying to find a way to make her look like the bad guy in the situation. When it came to things like styling, it's pretty obvious you can't necessarily blame her, but you could mainly blame the stylist for the outfit choices that they were making. But K-pop fans don't want to blame someone they cannot see. We don't know these stylists and what they look like. They want a face and a name to paste all of their hate on. So people started going out of their way to nitpick anything and everything she does. As if it wasn't enough that the favoritism allegations were just insane, we had to go through what I call Strawberry Gate. This is a scene which is behind the scenes the members were I believe they were just eating some snacks or they were eating strawberries and when one young held her strawberry with both hands and bit into it and also i believe there was one scene when she was drinking a cup of milk people got really upset at her they said why did she have to hold the strawberry with two hands why did she have to bite into the strawberry like that and since then it became a huge debate some people felt like this is just a strawberry like me it's not something you need to discuss but a lot of people made a big deal out of the way she chose to bite into a strawberry in fact this debate became so huge that the videos of one young eating a strawberry or if you try to even look up one young eating a strawberry the search terms are all over the place the videos have millions and millions of views and thousands upon thousands and sometimes tens of thousands of comments hating on the way a 17 year old chose to bite into a strawberry. It is obviously strange, but like I said, it is a snowball effect. It starts with something small and as soon as you give them something to hate on, it will become a dumpster fire. When I say the hate was insane, I can't even begin to describe it to you. It was so big and why I even call it strawberry gate because that's what it was because the hate on it was so huge. A lot of people when they were criticized for hating on one young for this strawberry issue their reaction was usually it's my opinion now first and foremost k-pop stands don't seem to understand that we don't need their opinions on everything we most certainly do not need opinions on the way someone chooses to bite into a strawberry but this is the time when we started to get the whole one young is a pygmy the reason why she ate that strawberry is because she was trying so hard to look cute and to gain attention. And because of this, the word pick me started to circle around one young. The idea was that the reason why she ate that way is because she was trying too hard to look cute. Even the people who didn't necessarily hate one young said that they found that clip cringy, but not cringy enough to write essays about it and complain about it. And I think it's fine if you think it is cringy. What I don't understand is why you have to make constant comments. How slow and sad does your life have to be for you to write an essay as to how someone bites into a strawberry? When you narrow it down to that, you realize how silly that argument is. But people started comparing her to the rest of the members and how they quote unquote eat normally compared to her. 
So because of this, this became a huge issue and people could not stop talking about it. Since then, the nitpicking became even bigger. Just about anything Won Young did was nitpicked. And this is what led us to something even bigger than Strawberry Gate. What I call Bowing Gate. This is when Won Young started to get a shit ton of hate for quote unquote, the way that she bows or rather a lack of bowing. What bothered me a lot about these clips that were showing Won Young not bowing is how heavily edited they are. When it comes to bowing gate, I want to focus mainly on three things that have been pretty obvious in the increasing of Won Young's hate. The first thing I want to talk about is the evil editing, obviously. And then second, I want to talk about moving the goalpost. And then finally, I want to talk about Bang Chan because it seems as if people have misunderstood what he said and made a big deal out of it and just increased the wave of hate that Won Young has gotten. So let's start off with the evil editing. This all started on Twitter, at least for me, when I came across someone who mentioned that Won Young did not bow to NCT when she was interviewing them on Music Bank. Now, I usually do not watch these interviews, but that specific interview, I did watch. And I remembered Won Young bowing not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. So why was this person cutting off the parts when she was actually bowing to these people? So I went to rewatch the clip in case I was wrong. And as you guys can see here on the screen, when the interview was over and the members were done asking their fans to support them, she bowed twice, moves out of the way. And as the members leave, once all the members have left, she bowed twice yet again. But for some reason, the person who posted this clip on Twitter, and I also saw it on TikTok, cut off all the bits when she was bowing. And you can tell that the hate is malicious. I remember another, I think this was a Korean netizen who posted a clip saying that Won Young, quote unquote, did not clap for IU's performance at Melon. When he did, she did clap. They just cut off the part where she did clap and show the part where she was not clapping and claimed that she didn't clap for IU. You can tell that people are going out of their way to make sure people think that Won Young doesn't bow. In fact, it got so bad to the point where people would bow behind her back and she doesn't see them because either she's distracted talking into the camera or saying thank you to her fans that if she did not bow back, it became a big deal. Unfortunately, it's gotten to the point where now we're dealing with comparisons, which is really sad. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen Minji of New Jeans doing, you know, some interviews as well. And when she was bowing, she mainly did the 90 degree bow. And instead of people praising Minji for her interview skills or her doing a great job, people turned this into yet another Minji versus Chang Wan Yang situation, turning Minji's moment into a Wan Yang hating crusade is not only unfair for the girl who's trying to forge her own personal you know road within k-pop but it is also unfair and unnecessary to Won Young. the whole thing has become so bad there's people making clips everywhere i know there's one clip on youtube with over half a million views talking about how disrespectful Won Young is the number of shorts i have seen talking about Won Young's lack of bowing is insane and a lot of these clips are people literally bowing to Won Young either to her side or behind her back that she didn't see and when she does not bow back either because she's talking into the camera or she's singing her part it becomes a big deal what made it funny for me is I watched some of the Eyes One clips that they use to prove that Won Young isn't bowing. In those clips, you can actually tell that some of the members of Eyes One were also not bowing, but no one was paying attention to them. I remember one music for, I think it was Music Core One or KBS, where Yuri didn't bow. Another one, Yena didn't bow. Another one, Yena and Heywon didn't bow, but no one said anything about them. Instead, they were criticizing Won Young, quote unquote, not bowing or where they move the goalpost and say Won Young was not bowing enough. So let's talk about moving the goalpost. Moving the goalpost is basically a metaphorical phrase that is used when people change the rules or the criteria of a game while the game is still ongoing, either to create an advantage or a disadvantage. Moving the goalpost is something that K-pop fans have done over the years in order to suit their fancy. The best example that I have is the whole BTS and English music disaster. I believe it was an interview with the Times in 2016 when RM said that BTS would never make English music 
to get a number one and that if they did it was not bts now i am was specifically speaking about him and his group but armies actually they don't deserve to be called that let me call them what they are usually called which is armchairs went out of their way to make this a big deal and started slandering any and all groups that either used a lot of english or did english music namely monster x in february of 2020 when they released an english album for their fans i believe this was on valentine's day and it was to interact more with their international fans and when you know billboard announced that their album yes their album had debuted at number five on the billboard 200 there was toxic armies or armchairs everywhere in the comment section who could not stop whining and complaining about how monster x was running away from their roots so they are undoing all the work that parasite and bts did by pandering to a xenophobic industry etc etc yes People who knew nothing about Korean culture are telling Koreans that they are the ones who are running away from their roots. It was a complete mess and of course I am going to upload proof because when I talked about this before, I mean swore that this did not happen. Now, less than six months after this whole thing with Monster X happened, Dynamite showed up and their fans said it was for the fans. When Mon Bebe said that Monster X's English album was for the fans, they said no, it was for Western validation. However, when it was BTS, allegedly it was for the fans. But we all know that it was for the Grammys, right? When BTS released yet another English song, the story went from RM never said they'd not release an English song, he said an English album. They went as far as to manipulate people into believing that that's what RM said when RM said that they would not release English music. They were never asked whether they would release an English song or an English album, they were asked their thoughts on releasing English music and they said that they wouldn't do it. Now, I personally believe that it is okay to change your mind and I don't think there's anything wrong with the fact that BTS changed their mind because once again, the game in the Grammys is vastly different from say the game in South Korea when you want to win a day song. Anyway, they released again another song and the story became, oh, it's okay when everyone does it, but when it's BTS who do it, they are the only ones who get hate. The point I'm trying to make is that they constantly change the story to suit their narrative. And this is the same thing that happened with Won Young. It went from Won Young doesn't bow to when people started realizing that she does bow, it became Won Young doesn't bow enough. One of the things I've noticed about K-pop fans is that they're constantly going out of their way to speak on Korean culture, even though they A, do not come from it or B, don't do their research. Personally, I believe if you do not come from a culture but you want to give an opinion, it would be best for you to at least do your research to figure out where, you know, that particular culture stands in terms of respect or whatever issue you are discussing. The point I'm trying to make is that when I looked this up, I learned a few things. There's a 15 degree bow, 30 degree bow, 45 degrees and 90 degrees. From what I learned when you are formally introduced to someone, you bow about 30 degrees. And I also learned that 15 degrees is usually a sign of saying excuse me or thank you, just being polite. So when idols are congratulating each other either for winning an award or getting a win on music shows, usually it is the 15 degree bow that is expected. And if we walk by those rules of that culture, one young is bowing enough. Whether you want to hear it or not, she is. She doesn't have to go the whole 90 degree yards. It's not necessary and according to their culture, it's not something that she has to do. Now, when it comes to bowing, allegedly you don't really have to bow to your friends, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with being polite and saying hello. So the 15 degree bow that Won Young is doing is more than enough. What I don't understand is that we've seen a lot of idols, male and female idols alike, do 15 degree bows and never saw anyone complaining about it. Yet that hate is specifically targeted towards Wan Young. And you can tell that the issue isn't necessarily the culture or the bowing, it is Wan Young. A lot of people saying things like she doesn't bow enough is genuinely a sign that they don't even bother to do their research. And you know that actually overly bowing in inappropriate situations genuinely can make other people uncomfortable and that's why people who are going to South Korea or Japan or whatever are encouraged to not over bow in certain situations because no one wants to be in a case where someone is just bowing like crazy or overdoing it because it makes people uncomfortable. 
So for those of you who say that Wan Yang is not bowing enough, she is actually doing just fine. She doesn't have to go the whole 30 degrees or 45 degrees or 90 degrees when she's simply saying thank you to people congratulating her or her group for their award wins. Now, while we're speaking on the case of not bowing enough, I think it will be safe to talk about the disaster that was Melon. So when Melon 2022 happened, I've got a lot of flack and hate from that specific award show. But a lot of it mainly came from the whole she didn't bow at TXT situation. So I've was announced as the winners for song of the year. They got their die saying at Melon 2022. And when you look at the clip, the girls were overcome with emotion. I don't think they actually expected to win that. And they were shocked. And as you can see, they turned to their right to their label mates, Monster X, who stood up, clap hands for them. And you can see I am, he goes, hey, you know what? Go get your award and whatever. And the members congratulate them the girls all bowed to monster x and you can tell that they're kind of choking with emotion and for those of you who be like no they weren't well this is what they sounded like by the time they got to the stage so you can tell that they were kind of really choked up and as the girls walk down the aisle the members of txt bow to Eugen, Eugen bows back, but you can see from one young all the way to the rest of the members, they didn't seem to be paying attention to TXT bowing to them. Now, all I could see was comments of who ignores Biomgu. Now, I don't hate the kid, but can we just be frank here? Biomgu can be ignored. Not should be, can be. He's human. He's not the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's not, yes, I don't think he should be ignored on purpose, but it is possible that he could get ignored because he is human and we live, you know, here, down here on earth. I don't know where y'all live, but people kept saying, who ignores Biomgu? And I've not bowing to Biomgu, I've not bowing to TXT became a thing and it was everywhere on TikTok, here on the YouTube shorts. It was unbearable seeing the number of people just screaming that I did not bow down. You can see the cameras were in their faces. They were kind of like choked up in emotion, but it didn't end there because as the girls were walking, all you could see was a shit ton of complaining about how Wan Yang and Eugene were quote unquote racing to go get the award. A lot of people said that Eugene as a leader should be the one to hold the award, but Wan Yang quote unquote wanted all the glory for herself. Other people criticized that Eugene was a leader and she was not looking out for the rest of the members. The girls are literally on their way to get an award on stage. They are not in the middle of the jungle. They are not in the Sahara Desert. They are not in a dangerous space. But of course, people cut the clip when they got to the award. They never bothered to show that the whole time when Eugene was walking, she had her fingers laced together and they remained that way even after Wan Yang got the award. Eugene had no intentions of holding that award. And when they got the award, Wan Yang actually ushered Eugene, as you can see, she put her hand on the small of Eugene's back, ushered her to the microphone, and then started checking around to make sure that all the members were present before they gave their thank you speech. The same Wan Yang they said didn't care about the members was the same Wan Yang looking for the members to make sure that they were all there and in line. And you can tell that even from this behavior, K-pop fans have always tried to push this narrative that Wan Yang doesn't care about the rest of the members. This reminds me of the airport situation. I'm pretty sure you guys all remember the airport situation where Wan Yang allegedly shoved Gail out of the way when they were trying to take pictures because she quote unquote wanted to be in the center. I don't know how long some of the people who are criticizing the situation have been K-pop fans, but as far as I remember, a lot of K-pop groups have an order as to the way that they stand. I'm going to use an example with Everglow. Everglow's current leader and face of the group right now is Xion and the center of the group is Iran. And usually when they stand, the order is always the same. Xion and Iran are usually at the center all the time. 
when EU was the leader, she also happened to be in the center all the time, but she's no longer the leader now, so she's not part of the arrangement. So the standing arrangements are usually the same. Whoever is the leader of the group or the face of the group and the centers of the group usually stand at the center in comparison to everyone else. Wan Yang was not shoving Kayul out of the way, she was simply arranging them like she should because her and Eugene should be in the center. Eugene is the leader and Wan Yang is the center of the group. And this is part of the reason why there's a big beef between Kaiyu stands and Wan Yang stands, because Kaiyu stands have always had this victim mentality that they put on Kaiyu, like, oh, poor Kaiyu, Wan Yang treats her so terribly and she does not treat her with fairness. Be strong, Kaiyu, you will be okay. And I've noticed that this has often been a pattern with most K-pop fans. The idol who is least biased sometimes, like say Onda, etc., usually have this brew of toxic fans who go out of the way to try and victimize this person when honestly they aren't a victim in a situation. They go out of their way to make up scenarios in their heads that do not exist and nitpick certain situations and interactions that they have in order to, you know, make them look like victims. I've seen some people actually go out of their way to make up a story that Wan Yang is quote unquote making Liz feel bad about her weight. Others said that she actually forced Liz to stop eating. It is insane the numbers of rumors out there about Wan Yang, but people will go that far to try and victimize people. I am going to say this, Kayu and Liz are not victims of Wan Yang. Please shut up. You're embarrassing yourselves and you're honestly probably making the group uncomfortable. I know for a fact that if my fans were going out of their way to make one of my team or bandmates uncomfortable because they quote unquote love me so much, it would create an awkward situation for me. I would genuinely be embarrassed as a K-pop idol to have fans who behave in that manner. This mainly pertains to the fact that K-pop stands have hero complex. Hero complex Complex is basically a situation where someone is obsessed with being a hero that they'll even go as far as to create problems that don't exist in order to become a savior. And K-pop stands like it when there's victims that they can come and quote unquote save because it makes them feel better about themselves as human beings. And I've noticed that this pattern is very similar with Liz and especially with Kyle fans. A lot of these people want to act as if Liz and Kyle are not riding on Wan Young's pop popularity right now. I noticed that someone said that, oh, I don't think it's fair for you to say that because this is the reason why Wan Yang gets a lot of hate, but it is true. While Ive's music is great, it's actually just the icing on the cake. The reason why Ive is as big as they are is mainly because of Wan Yang. The person who is bringing Ive the popularity that they have right now has ungrateful fans who are constantly nitpicking just about anything and everything that she does. The lack of gratitude you people have to the hard work that this girl has put over the years to help put her group on the map right now is absolutely shocking. Now let's discuss the case with Bang Chan. A lot of his fans got really touchy on my community post, so I'm going to answer some of the questions that you had. Number one, Bang Chan is not the only person who's complained about this, so why are you singling him out? Well, because out of all the idols who've complained about the lack of bowing these days, he's the only one whose fans have gone out of their way to go and attack other people for things that he said when he was never directing or indirectly speaking to them. So this is why I'm bringing Bang Chan out. One. Two, it's because I actually want to clarify what Bang Chan said versus what other people are saying about Bang Chan. So recently, if you scroll into a lot of these shorts videos discussing Wan Yang not bowing, you'll see a similar sentiment in a lot of these comments. The complaint is usually, I love Wan Yang, but, which to me is a red flag, as soon as I read that, I do not read the rest of the comments, or it is, her fans need to stop justifying her behavior, or Wan Yang has a bad attitude, you need to face it. The comments are always similar. But recently, I've been seeing a new set of comments of, this is what Bang Chan was talking about, oh my god, Bang Chan is right, this is the thing that Bang Chan, you see, recently Bang Chan said, and I started to wonder, what on earth did Bang Chan have to do with this? Now, my assumption was that Bang Chan talked about a situation that had nothing to do with Wan Yang and then his fans took it out of context and started harassing her like they do with Wu Jin. And turns out my assumption was right. In a V Live 
Bang Chan was talking about his experience at KCON LA and he was talking about how much he enjoyed Light Some Song Alive. But he also said that he really liked the way that Light Some greeted them because he felt like young people nowadays don't greet as well. You could tell that he was a little hesitant to discuss it because he didn't, like he said, didn't want to sound like a boomer, but I don't think he was sounding like a boomer at all. There's nothing boomer about asking for decent behavior, especially when you are greeting someone. Instead of putting words in his mouth, I'm going to play the clip here so you can hear exactly what he said. If I light some, and um, yeah, I, cause you know, while I was backstage, this song just kept, you know, it stuck to my head. I feel like it was really um, good. I just mem remembered it, like being played. I was like, oh, wow, that's, this is a pretty good song. And then, yeah, that's what I remember. And um, another behind the scenes things that happened was um, they were really, um, I guess, good at greeting us. Like whenever we walked by each other or anything, they were like, oh, I'm like, oh, very, very nice. Cause I might sound like a like a boomer, but like greeting, I feel like is very, very, very important. It's a simple gesture, but there's a big difference when you say hi or if you don't say hi. You know what I mean? And it depends on how you say that hi. It makes the other person feel a certain way. Like if I walk past someone and I could be like, "Oh, yes, here." It's like it's got that very friendly vibe, but you can't just go, "Oh, yes, here." It's bland. It might seem rude as well. That's why I feel like the tone of the greet, the way you greet is really, really important. Like, you know how doing like a full 90 degree Anyasio might be the proper way, but um, I feel like putting emotion into a greet is more important than how you actually do it. So um, yeah, I don't know why I'm talking about this, but- From this context, you can tell that the act of bowing isn't necessarily what bothers Chan, but it is the tone that comes with greeting someone. Like you said, there's a difference between just going Anya Seo and going, oh, Anya Seo, because the tone in it reflects certain behavior. Like for instance, you can have a little, show a little enthusiasm when you're greeting someone. Don't act like, oh, this is a chore. I just have to do it in the name of respect. Bang Chan was mainly concerned about the tone of greeting people than the bow in itself. And a lot of the fans went and made this about a bowing situation. Now, every time you see a one young doesn't bow video, it is just a shit ton of comments talking about Chan said, Chan said. Now, I believe I said that it is always Chan, I swear. And for some reason, people thought that I was blaming this on Chan. Since when would I blame Chan for his fans' behavior when I already know the amount of hate that Chan gets? And a lot of people are like, don't you know how much hate Chan gets? I do. I would have never made this video if I was not aware. The issue I have here is with his fans over something that he said. So basically, it's not that I hate Chan or I'm mad at him for talking about this. In fact, if anything, the situation makes me feel sorry for him because I feel like Chan almost doesn't have room to express how he feels without his words being taken out of context. And I think it's unfair because I believe that we need more idols like Chan who speak exactly how they feel in certain situations in order for K-pop idols being human to be normalized. So once again, this is yet another situation completely taken out of context in order to hate on Wan Young. And as you can tell, this is 40 minutes of talking about so many things that Wan Yang has gotten so much hate for. All in all, I can say a lot of the hate that Wan Yang gets comes from different groups of people, and it all depends on how they see her. There's a group of people that are genuinely jealous about anything that Wan Yang has accomplished in her life. She is 17 years old. She has probably a lot of money from the many, many gigs that she's done. She was adored by South Korea for so long. She's seen as the it girl of the fourth generation. And doing that and accomplishing so much at a young age makes other people feel some type of way. People feel like she's privileged or she acts like she's better than anyone else because the stereotype of people who have a lot of money and when they are young is usually that they think they are better than other people. So you have the sector of people who hate one young simply because you are jealous. They are jealous. Then you have a sector of people who hate one young because they think that they're doing the right thing. This is where self-righteousness comes in, where people think that they are genuinely, quote unquote, criticizing Wan Yang because 
it's the right thing to do because the way she ate the strawberry was weird because she's being favored by other people because she doesn't bow and she's being disrespectful but these are the people who have never bothered to actually do their research into bowing culture in south korea to know how it works and when it works and when it is appropriate or not appropriate that they've gone out of their way to actually think that they are genuinely criticizing a young child for bad behavior when in reality they've never bothered to do their research to know when it is appropriate to criticize and when it isn't. Then we have another set of people who are just trolls. These are the people who just want to hate on one young because they can. It's that simple. We all know that there are a lot of K-pop fans who will hop on the opportunity to say something bad about anyone even if they don't know them. We saw the whole thing with Jimin, like her hate was so big because a lot of people who didn't know anything about AOA kind of got involved in the drama. So you've got these three sets of people who hate Won Young for different reasons and will go out of their way to nitpick anything and everything that she does in order to spread hate. And the problem is the hate with Won Young is not going away anytime soon. In fact, I expect this hate train to go on for a while. Unless K-pop fans find someone who does something worse and is still in the industry, I doubt that Wan Yang's hate is going to go away. It has to be something similar with Jenny, where the hate started to die down once someone else had become a villain. You guys remember what happened with Karam. During that time, a lot of people were not really concentrating on Wan Yang or anything she was doing because at that time they were bullying a 16 year old for things that she did not do. And once Karam came out of the picture, people were bored again and they needed to find someone else. K-pop stands are bullies and like most bullies they find someone who they think is the weakest link and they will berate them until they are bored and find someone else. This case with Won Young is genuinely terrifying because it seems like a lot of people have forgotten a couple of things. Won Young, if you strip away all her accomplishments, she still is human and more than that she's a 17 year old girl. The comfortability that K-pop stands have with dragging a 17 year old for filth for some of the most basic things whether it is throwing a baseball biting into a strawberry the way she chose to eat a pizza for a commercial is genuinely shocking because a lot of the times k-pop fans have dehumanized idols and forgotten that underneath the accolades underneath the talent underneath the glitz and glams at the end of the day they are just people and people get affected by hate while Wan Yang has mentioned a couple of times that she doesn't pay attention to people who hate on her and even at the melon or if it's not mama I believe she said that she's simply going to concentrate on people who support her at the end of the day the reality is this is not something she should have to do if basic human decency was a part of the equation with K-pop stands. But K-pop stands are not going to change, which is forcing really young kids to grow thick skin, which is something they are not supposed to do. But it is sad because this is the reality that she has to deal with. You look at even her bandmate Iso, who's only like what, 15 years old, who's had to deal with a lot of backlash for the smallest and tiniest little things is embarrassing. K-pop stands now have a reputation of being actual bullies because they forget that the people that they're dealing with and talking to at the end of the day are just humans. And that's what scares me the most about this because this is the journey that we are heading into as K-pop. And I honestly am not sure if I'm going to be able to keep up with behavior where children are treated terribly and they are not allowed to be children. Part of the reason why I'm so against minors or at least anyone under 16 years old being a K-pop idol because K-pop fans are just ruthless and so mean and it is honestly unfair. So here's my advice. From now on, if you are a One Young Stan, a One Young fan, I would just suggest that you focus on all the good things that Won Young has done, focus on praising her. Like I said, if people can hate on her for the smallest little things, then I am going to praise her for the tiniest little things. Because Won Young said that she wants to focus on her fans who are kind and loving and respectful. Let's do that for her so she can have more good things to concentrate on. And for those of you who hate Won Young, I would suggest that maybe you do a little bit of soul searching. Ask yourself why on earth it's been normal for you to go on the internet and hate on a 17 year old. 
you might find out that the problem isn't necessarily her, but it's you.